Knowing what material is under your roof that's creating your roof deck is very important for a number of reasons, including strength, durability, cost, engineering, and several other reasons. So today on the Metal Roofing Channel, we are comparing, contrasting OSB and plywood. What's up guys, welcome to Q&A Mondays. I'm Thad Barnett. Today we're talking about OSB versus plywood and what you should know for your roof decking. And today I have Jeff Hawk, the technical director for Sheffield Metals. Thanks Jeff for being here. We have a lot to cover with this topic. So make sure you check out in the description all the questions we're gonna be talking about today is there so you can jump ahead to your specific question. So Jeff, can you talk to me first about what actually is the difference between OSB and plywood and kind of how those relate? Okay, so the main difference is basically how they're made. Uh, plywood is, you know, it comes in all various different sizes, but it has plies. Uh, so it's basically thin sheets of wood that are glued together. You know, for half inch plywood, you could have anywhere from three plies to five plies. Uh, five eighths plywood, you could have anywhere from four plies to seven plies. So you have stacks of wood on top of each other that are glued together. Uh, OSB or oriented strand board is basically a lot of wood chips that are glued and hot pressed together to make up a, a solid board. So, you know, half inch oriented strand board basically starts off as six inches of chips and glue and then they press it together with uh, heat and it seals it and makes it into this oriented strand board. So those are, that's the main difference between the two is basically how the product's made. When it comes to popularity, you know, what do you see more, OSB or plywood for roof decking? Probably traditionally plywood has been the go-to, but oriented strand board OSB is getting more popular uh, for no other reason that it's cheaper. You know, it's a, it's a cheaper to buy a sheet of OSB board than it is to buy a sheet of plywood. So, you know, that's a you know, big reason right there. It's becoming popular as, uh, you know, it's able to reduce costs and still provide, you know, meet code and provide the structural integrity that you're looking for. So let's talk about how these relate to an engineered system. Can you talk to me about OSB versus plywood and say Sheffield Metals engineering? Okay, so Sheffield, we test over plywood. Um, half inch plywood is our standard test deck for, uh, you know, plywood installations. Um, you can use that same engineering for over OSB decks, uh, but it's going to depend on the thickness of the OSB and the pullout values of the fastener that you're using. So, you know, for, for example, a number 10 by one inch fastener in plywood, half inch plywood, uh, the pullout values is around 375 pounds. Same fastener being used in OSB, you're going to have about 357 pounds in the uh, 1930 seconds uh, OSB board. So half inch plywood's 375 pounds, 1930 seconds OSB is 357 pounds of pullout value. They're pretty similar, similar um, as far as the engineering goes. The problem you run into a lot is people trying to get away with using 7 16 OSB board. Um, it's quite a bit thinner and the pullout values drop off dramatically. So the pullout values again for a number 10 by one inch pancake head fastener and 7 16 OSB is 166 pounds. So that's a far cry from the 1930 seconds OSB or the half inch plywood. You know? Definitely. So that's, that's where you gotta pay attention and that's where you have to be careful. So as long as the pullout values are similar enough you know, depending on the varying, varying thicknesses of OSB or plywood, then it still works with Sheffield's engineering. Yeah, we usually recommend 5 8 inch OSB if you're gonna go with an OSB application. Um, okay. some, comp some companies have tested over OSB and obviously, you know, whatever they tested over is, is gonna be fine with what they work with. Um, you know, but for wood applications, you know, there's, you know, a lot of people use different thicknesses of wood in their, in their building. So you gotta make sure all wood decks aren't created the same, basically. You have to make sure of what you're attaching to, the type of material it is, the thickness, and things like that. So in addition to pullout value and strength and durability, are there any other characteristics of OSB versus plywood that you know varies when it comes to roof decking? OSB is quite a bit heavier than plywood, not, you know, depending on, the, again, the width and things like that. Uh, pros of OSB, again, is it's cheaper. 
it's you know the both of them are very versatile as far as you know what could, what can be done with them. So again, it all basically comes down to what it is that you're doing, what you're looking for as far as costs and things like that. You know, some people, you know, in high wind zones, they you know they want uh, decks with the best pull out possible, and you know they'll get five ply plywood, half inch plywood. Um, you know, because the more plies and plywood you have, the uh, more strength you're going to have in pull out values. So again, it yeah. depends on the geographic location you're in and what the goal is. Now, if OSB gets moisture or uh, gets saturated with water, it has a tendency to expand, swell up, and then stay swollen like that. Is that going to affect a metal roof installation over something like that? Yeah, I mean, plywood and OSB, you don't really want either of them to get wet. They have to be able to dry if they do get wet. Plywood, from my experience, does hold up a little bit better uh, where, you know, you get OSB board where it starts flaking apart because, you know, the moisture can't dry out. But, um, you know, you, you don't want any of them getting soaked, basically. You know, wood products, it's not, it's not going to have a good outcome. You know, so you want to make sure you're using a quality dry-in. You want to make sure that you've got the proper details. You know, you put a deck up there, you want to get it dried in as fast as possible. Um, you know, so it's not being exposed to the elements. Now, when it comes to installation, I mean, that's something that the two have in common. I mean, the installation is not really going to change between OSB and plywood. Is that right? Right. The, the pattern is going to, the nail pattern is going to be whatever code is or whatever the engineering calls for that it was tested on. You know, so you're going to have your field space and then you're going to have your perimeter spacings, you know, as far as your nail off pattern goes. Just while we're talking about, uh, fastening patterns and things like that, I will say, uh, you know, you, sometimes it does come up and you got to be careful that sometimes uh, engineering will call up for the roof deck to be screwed down versus nailed down. Um, okay. We don't do any of that in our testing, but there are some construction numbers out there that do call for the deck to be screwed down, which is not your typical application at all. So in addition to plywood and OSB, do you come across any other types of wood decking? Probably the most common deck that we come across, other than the two that we've been talking about, is uh, one by six tongue and groove decking. Um, you usually see that in applications where they're going to leave the ceiling exposed or something along those lines. Uh, a one inch fastener can fully embed into the uh, decking itself uh, without penetrating it. And again, it is, it's all based on pull out values as far as that's concerned. But that would probably be the, the most common one we see, other than the OSB. And and honestly, we do see we see a lot of seven sixteen OSB too. And that's you know we try to educate people that that is not a that's not what you want to be using for your roof deck because again, as we talked about, the pull out values are just dramatically less when you get into that thinner material. Definitely. So that about covers it when it comes to metal roof installation specifically. If you have any more questions, please comment down below. If there's anything else when it comes to this comparison or other comparisons you'd like, uh, we'd like to, we'd love to cover those in a future video as well. Subscribe here to the Metal Roofing Channel. As always, I'm Fab Barnett, and we'll catch you next time.